This is ABC 15 Mornings. How long until everyone is able to get a vaccine? If we need to vaccinate millions of people in a short amount of time, we need all hands on deck. Shipments of shots are increasing as we work to reach herd immunity. What happens in those first five years literally builds their brain. You are a brain architect. Could the majority of kids be back in the classroom by April? They're complete strangers to me. Obviously, they couldn't have worked for us. The Rebound Arizona team finding business owners getting hit with unemployment fraud. No sport holds its statistics more nearly than, than the game of baseball does. Long overdue for America's favorite pastime, the Negro Leagues finally designated as Major League. And it is about time. It really, the, the timing is perfect on this. We'll get to this story momentarily. But pitchers and catchers are reporting today. Been on Twitter, Cincinnati Reds, the Cleveland Indians. It's fun to watch everybody so excited about being out of the cold weather and to really move forward with something that uh, we were cut short on last year, spring training. First, we say good morning to you. Thank you for hanging out with us on a Wednesday morning. Kaylee O'Kelly in studio. Nick Saletti, social distancing from our newsroom. Hey, good morning. Yeah, uh, great to hear about uh, the boys of summer coming back yes. in town, right? Yeah. Hey, I have to say, though, it doesn't really feel so spring like <laughs> out there this morning, though. Let's get to meteorologist Iris Hermosillo. Iris, it is a little chilly as we kick off this Wednesday. You're probably going to need that jacket this morning. I think so. Maybe the car heater on too as you're driving into work. We're taking a live look right now with our Mayo Clinic Valley Cam up look towards the Loop 101. Chelsea, of course, is going to have an update on our roadways in just a little bit. But if you're heading out the door and jumping in your car here soon, look at these temperatures. 37 right now in Mesa. Phoenix Sky Harbor, as promised, dropping back into the mid 40s. Now we're down to 46 degrees. 41 in Chandler, 42 in Glendale and Avondale, back into the low 50s. So a little bit of a mixed bag of temperatures across the valley, but all in all, it is colder this morning across areas. Arizona in comparison to yesterday. And it's going to be a cooler day too. Our high temperature reaching 67 degrees, so no 70s today, and we'll likely see the 60s by the middle of the day, lunchtime into the afternoon. So 67 today, but we're also going to get more breezes and another chance for some snow showers in northern Arizona. We'll detail that out on future cast here in just a few minutes. For now though, sending it over to Chelsea Davis watching those roads. Good morning, Iris. Thank you so much. All right, well, let's talk about what's going on with our roadways. Right now with our Accident Law Group traffic maps, I'm zooming you to the north side of town, show you those freeways are quiet, showing lots of green conditions at this point. Same with the East Valley, even into and out of Maricopa on State Route 347. Now, we still have this closure in place because of a trooper investigation. I-17 ramps from northbound and southbound I-17 wanting to connect to westbound I-10 are closed and we do not know when those are going to be back open. Now, this does not mean that I-17 and I-10 are closed. Those main lanes are open. It's just those connecting ramps to get you to westbound I-10. Also, in the area, we have a crash on I-10 in the westbound direction near 19th Avenue. Most of the slowing for that one, though, is on the eastbound side. Okay, for the closure, here are some quick alternates to help you get by. You could travel westbound on McDowell or Van Buren and then connect onto I-10 using 35th, 27th, or 19th Avenues. You can also use uh, the 51 and make a connection there too. So this ADOT cam looks like they just changed the position. So I'll let you know if anything changed here as if anything opened in the last few seconds. I'll keep you posted. All right, Chelsea, thank you for weeks. Arizona's COVID cases and hospitalizations have been dropping. More people are getting the vaccine. And if you're 65 or older, you're eligible. But this morning, a new roadblock. John Tedavisi is live for us. And John, the severe weather in other parts of the country now impacting the supply chain for that vaccine. Exactly, Nick. Yet another setback when it comes to getting this vaccine out quickly to people across the state. For days now, we've been showing folks at home that extreme winter weather hitting much of the country. And new this morning, a CDC spokesperson saying to expect widespread delays when it comes to vaccine shipments. Now, some shipping hubs are being affected and the delays expected to last for several days. And because of those delays, some Arizona County Health Departments have had to cancel appointments. Now, right now, Maricopa County says they are not canceling appointments, but will continue to evaluate supply throughout today and tomorrow. Now, the state was expecting another million and a half vaccines to arrive this week. The delay is really affecting every state right now. Meantime, the president says when it's your turn, don't wait and roll up your sleeve. We had an 8.30 and my husband had an 8.35 appointment. And we got here and then we were like third in line. 
we received no notification whatsoever. If you're eligible, if it's available, get the vaccine. By next Christmas, I think we'll be in a very different circumstance, God willing, than we are today. Again, these weather related delays only expected to last for a few days and based on the latest data, it shows around one in eight Arizonans have received at least one dose of the vaccine. Guys. All right, John, important update there. Thank you. Some other short term speed bumps in the vaccine process we're seeing. Moderna is now reporting a production delay with the contractor for its vaccine, but the company insists it will be resolved quickly. The bigger concern is Johnson and Johnson, whose single shot vaccine is expected to be approved by the end of the month. The company is now reducing its initial vaccine supply estimates. Measuring the impact of the pandemic on student learning, education leaders say this is critical to help our kids rebound. Governor Ducey issuing an executive order to move forward with AZ merit testing this spring, but he is pausing the state's A through F letter grade system for schools. The goal here is to measure where students are without punishing schools or districts based on those results. And our state's largest district, Mesa Public Schools, telling us they are especially concerned with the number of Fs that students have received, which jump. 10% last semester compared to the year before. There's four years to accumulate a certain amount of credits. And if you, you, you end up two or three credits deficient, then you have to make that up within the same to keep them on track for graduation. So Mesa and really a lot of other districts too are now rolling out targeted interventions and supports to help students stay or get back on track. Well, we know education and our schools are a topic so many of you have questions about right now. Today, our Danielle Lerner is hosting a town hall education, a town hall with education officials, taking your questions, and you can watch on the ABC 15 Facebook page starting at noon. Well, how about this? The Arizona Interscholastic Association voting to allow more fans to go to games for the remainder of the winter sports season. But it is up to individual school districts to decide the number of people allowed to go in. There are three weeks left in the winter sports season. Are you ready for spring training today? Pitchers and catchers report to camp and the first games are scheduled next week. These videos showing teams sending their gear to the valley. Those trucks there a lot of equipment to unload. Hey, as we prepare to host another great season for the first time ever, the MLB is recognizing Negro League baseball players as major league. Mark Thompson is here with more on this historic decision. Mark, it's about time. It sure is, Nick. Good morning to you. And uh, the Negro League baseball players are finally going to be recognized by MLB as Major League. This is just a huge deal because it not only recognizes the greatness of these Negro League players in words, but it adds them to the record books as well. Take a look. Some of the names you know, Jackie Robinson, Hank Aaron, and pitching legend Satchel Paige. But there are hundreds of Negro League baseball players that have lived in the unseen shadows of history until now. He was the most popular player in black baseball. Phoenix author Jeremy Beer wrote a book on Oscar Charleston, one of the first Negro League players to earn a level of fame. Like a left-handed Mike Trout. I think he was built similarly to Mike Trout. He, had, he was very fast. He was a great fielder. He, he was a sparkling defensive center fielder, and then he could hit. After serving in the Army's all-black 24th Infantry, Charleston played for a team in Manila before moving back home to Indianapolis, Indiana in 1915 to play for the Negro League club, the Indianapolis ABCs. And the hard-hitting center fielder wasn't just celebrated by the black community, he also earned the respect of white players at the time. Well, they played major league players a lot. I don't I think people realize that they played them in, in, in preseason and postseason exhibition contests. So what does being tagged major league really mean? It means Negro League baseball players will finally be recognized as professional players on the same level as past and present MLB players and their statistics added to the record books. No sport holds its statistics more dearly than, than the game of baseball does. So, Scott Bush is CEO of the Society for American Baseball Research. For decades, his Negro League committee has been working to secure the major league designation. But he says in order to add the Negro League stats to the record books, you've got to find them first. 
And that's no easy task. The record keeping from the Negro Leagues um, was difficult to compile because uh, a lot of times newspapers were not publishing box scores. They may, they may cover the game and there could be a game story uh, that was written, but if the box score did not accompany it, it created challenges in terms of compiling the overall statistical record. And because statistics are such a big part of baseball history, we asked which well-known records may change when Negro League players are added to the books. For example, Ted Williams for the longest time has been known as the last major league hitter to bat 400 in a season. That is very likely to change. Um, now, I think we will not see a ton of change in career records. But beyond the numbers, it was the undeniable talent that jumped off the page and the incredible stories of overcoming day-to-day -day racism just to take the field. It was not an easy life. You had to love it to go through some of these things. And that last person you just heard from was Dr. Raymond Doswell. He is the vice president and curator of the Negro League Baseball Museum in Kansas City, Missouri. Now, he says another player of note that can't be ignored is Josh Gibson. He was a catcher and a tremendous slugger in his day, and he may change some of the current record books. Now, we're going to dive deeper into the everyday lives of these Negro League baseball players and talk about some of the day-to-day -day racism they had to overcome during the Jim Crow era just to take the field. That's coming up in part two of this series that will air next week. Guys, back to you. All right, excellent. Thank you so much for sharing that, Mark. Appreciate it. Up next here on ABC 15 Mornings, winter weather putting millions of people without power across the state of Texas. And we have a live report of that situation from San Antonio. Plus, losing a piece of the past. New for you this morning, how one group is working to preserve and revitalize native languages. Well, time right now, 614. As we talk about your most accurate forecast, we continue to monitor the dire situation across the southern U.S. as we see more ice falling in areas like Houston. That area in the pink is that ice that you're seeing there, and the blue is all of that snow that's still hitting states like Oklahoma, Arkansas, and Missouri. And, of course, the bitter cold still in that area. And this storm is the one that moved through Arizona yesterday that brought us some accumulating snow, although, of course, not as much of an impact as what we are seeing in areas to our east at this moment. Now, now that we're behind that storm system, we're waking up to mostly clear skies and cooler temperatures across the state. It's pretty cold, especially in northeast Arizona, where temperatures are down near zero in spots like Window Rock under those clear skies. But there's another chance for some snow showers today, although I don't expect much in terms of accumulation, maybe about a trace in Flagstaff, but we'll see a quick moving disturbance that will increase those clouds again by the afternoon and bring a few snow showers to northern Arizona. Here's a snapshot of future cast here at three o'clock. It's what radar could look like with some of that light snow falling in spots like Flagstaff staff near Sholo and Window Rock, and that trend will continue into the evening too. For the valley, we'll stay sunny through the morning, then we'll see some passing clouds this evening. Otherwise, we're going to get more winds as this disturbance moves in, and we'll see those temperatures a little bit lower than where they ended up yesterday as that disturbance essentially reinforces that cooler air. Then we'll dry things out across the state tonight, and we are staying mostly sunny and dry through the end of the week. Temperatures right now, Phoenix checking in at 46 degrees. It's colder in some neighborhoods, down into the 30s with winds out of the west at about five miles an hour at this point, but winds will increase as the day goes on. And by this afternoon, look at those sustained winds. We're talking sustained winds near 20 miles an hour with wind gusts as high as about 30 miles an hour. So it's going to be another breezy day here in the valley with temperatures climbing into the upper 60s. Not quite as warm as it was yesterday with highs in the 70s, but today 67 for a high in Phoenix, just below average. Should be a cool afternoon and again a breezy to windy one across the state. We'll get those breezes here in the valley and it'll be breezy in northern Arizona, but those winds will be stronger along the Colorado River, and this tends to happen when we get those northerly winds. You can see those wind speeds closer to about 20 to 25 miles an hour at times sustained, with wind gusts as high as 35 miles an hour possible in areas along the Colorado River. So breezy to windy, again, across Arizona, and cooler today, too. Here's a look at those highs. We'll make it to 67 in Phoenix, 52 for high in Kingman, upper 40s in Payson, and mid-30s today in Flagstaff, mid-30s in Sholo, too, and Window Rock will make it to free 
freezing today. That's about it. Temperatures will stay cool again tomorrow. Then we've got a weekend warm up with highs reaching the 70s starting Friday, upper 70s Saturday. Another quick moving disturbance will drop those highs a little bit on Sunday, but no rain, no snow with that one. Instead, then we've got another warm up next week with highs climbing into the 80s by Tuesday. Okay, Iris, thank you very much. Talk about this freezing rain you just mentioned. Certainly a dangerous situation. Right now, power outages are affecting more than 3 million people across the state of Texas. Having lived there in the past, it is crazy to see all of this video coming in. The state reporting dozens of carbon monoxide poisoning cases as well as people are doing anything and everything they can to keep warm. In San Antonio alone, more than a quarter of a million people are waking up without electricity. And that is where we find Dr. Megan Jarman. Good morning to you. And what is your situation? I'm told that you're sequestered there in that office. The rest of your house is near freezing. It's pretty cold here. <laughs> yeah. Um, I am lucky enough to be on an essential services grid, so I got to keep power this whole time. Uh, but my house is very old and the heater cannot keep up, so I kind of have placed myself and my pets in the smallest room in my house and uh, have been hiding in there with a space heater and a heated blanket with my pets in hopes that we do not become popsicles since the rest of my house has been 30s to 50s, depending on time of day. Well, we're seeing a, a real case of people just reaching out to other people, cases of genuine humanity. Uh, I'm also yes. told that you were able to help some of your neighbors because so many people don't yeah. know what to do. Well, no, no one around here. So the last time this happened was in 1984. I wasn't born yet. And um, none of my neighbors knew how to winterize their pipes. And lots of pipes have been frozen. And half of my street doesn't have water. So we've been, mm. all of the people that have sinks that are still working, we've been giving water to our neighbors in hopes that they can continue to flush their toilets and um, cook. Okay, so, I mean, these are just basic things and things that, you know, most of us, take for granted every single day. Yeah. But you think about uh, the water plants shutting down, water treatment plants, and mm -hmm. looking ahead to the future, we know more storms are coming there. What are you guys doing to try to plan? So at this point I was um, trying, the internet has been really spotty, yes. but we had a, uh, a, a news conference with CPS Energy. So they're working on trying to update their grids for this again, mm -hmm. uh, but they're not really, they couldn't really in here a good plan. Um, as for the water situation, um, I got an email this morning from the water company that was saying they're not shutting the water off, everything is good, but just try and continue to conserve as possible and help out your neighbors when they yes. need it. And I, I think that at this point, they're trying to figure out if this happens again, what they're going to do. Yeah, a plan definitely needs to be in place. That is so yeah. true. Dr. Jarman, thank you for your time this morning. Our thoughts and prayers are with you. Will you please keep us posted, we hope? Absolutely. Okay, take care. Bye-bye. Yeah, certainly hoping for the best for everyone there in Texas. Well, before COVID-19, it was a race against time to preserve native languages across the country and the pandemic making this even more urgent. The virus has hit tribal communities especially hard. The Cherokee Nation has had more than 30 of its fluent speakers pass away. The Language Conservancy is one group tackling this issue, moving teacher training and language classes onto Zoom. Languages are you know, an essential part of a community's identity and their health. And so we have this expression in the work we do that language is healing. And for many young people, the relearning of their language is a is an effort to come to terms with the trauma of the past and try to move forward in a positive way. The nonprofit also pivoting how it creates native language dictionaries, providing reservations with laptops and recordings set up for elders. Well, do you know an outstanding Latino teacher? Right now, nominations are being accepted for the annual Esperanza Latino Teacher Awards. The deadline is February 28th. You can download the forms at cplc.org. Four winning teachers will get $5,000 each. Working to get our military funded and vaccinated, ABC 15, the only station on the airfield, as Senator Mark Kelly takes a tour of Luke Air Force Base and also talks about COVID relief. Watch ABC 15 Arizona on your schedule. Stream the latest news and weather by searching ABC 15 on Roku, Fire TV, Android TV, and Apple TV. 624 and taking action for the more than 14,000 Arizona kids in foster care. Today, we're holding a phone bank. It's a fundraiser for Arizona Children's Association. It starts at 9 o'clock this morning during Sonoran Living, and it continues through our evening newscast. We hope 
that you can get involved in this. The money raised will help these Just For Me bags, help to stuff them. This gives kids who are making that tough transition into foster care some hygiene and personal items, all to call their own. And you can always donate online at abc15.com slash kids. As the COVID-19 vaccine rollout continues here across the country, scientists are working to find out if it provides enough protection for people living with cancer. Doctors say people already with cancer have suppressed immune systems and they want to know if the current vaccines generate the same level of antibodies as people who are healthy. While those studies are limited, oncologists we spoke to say the vaccines are safe for people with cancer and are encouraging them to get the shot when it's their turn. Even if it's not as effective as it can be in a non-cancer patient, some protection is better than none. Adults with high-risk medical conditions are part of the state's next vaccine group 1C, but right now it's unclear when they will be eligible. Well, soon we might be able to accurately test for COVID-19 with our phone. Kroger just applied for FDA approval. It's for the first smartphone enabled rapid antigen test. You do your own nasal swab. You scan the test with the app and the results pop up within seconds. And these will be sold at Fry's and other Kroger owned locations. No word yet on the price. Up next here at 630, getting students back to school safely. We take an in-depth look at the safety protocols at One Valley Preschool. Plus, time is running out on unemployment benefits and other programs to help people suffering during this economic downturn. In just moments, hear from Arizona Senator Mark Kelly and what parts of President Biden's relief package he supports.